Now, there's a lot of meaning, symbolism, and traditions associated with challah bread, and today we're going to find out exactly what those are. Joining me now are Yasi Yafi and Rohal Bela, the co-directors of Chabad on the Shoreline. Welcome back. Thank nice you. Nice to have you Thank here. Thank you so much. All right, so this is a, a long-standing tradition. Yes, Jews have been uh, eating challah and making challah for thousands of years. We traditionally eat two braided loaves uh, at the beginning of our Sabbath, Friday evening, and again on Saturday day to commemorate God's sustaining the Jewish people in the desert for 40 years with manna. Uh, they would collect a portion of manna every day and on Friday a double portion fell because they wouldn't collect it on the Sabbath. So we commemorate that with two braided loaves. Very good. And now you say there's also significance to the number of ingredients used. Yes. No matter where you go in the world and no matter how far back you go in time, there's traditionally seven ingredients to challah. So would you like me to yeah, let's, pour let's them in? Yeah, let's get going. Absolutely. So you have yeast, okay. which I've just proofed with a little bit of water. Okay. You have oil. Sure. You have salt. Which salt? Yeah. Okay. You have a sweetener, which I use honey, but some people use sugar. Okay. You have um, eggs. How many did you put in there? I put in five eggs. And this makes several loaves, correct? This makes six loaves okay. because, thank God, we have a nice-sized family and we sure. always have a lot of guests. Uh, and don't worry, it freezes beautifully. You can have some and then freeze the rest for another week. And the flour. Um, I And not to forget the water. I actually use uh, half whole wheat. Okay. Um, and it's, a, it's called, it's King Arthur flour. It's called white whole wheat, sure. which tastes just like regular flour. It makes a delicious, delicious challah. You pour in all your ingredients, and then you just mix it up to make a nice dough, which I'm not going to do. It doesn't look pretty. You get your hands. A lot of kneading, right? A lot of kneading for okay. about five minutes, and you end up with a clump of dough that looks like this. You set it aside to rise, so make okay. sure to make your challah on a day when you're home. Sure. <laughs> it's an all day thing? And well, if you're home, it's good. You could run out to the store and come back. It's very, <laughs> it's very forgiving. You could just punch it down. Okay. Once it rises, you punch it down, um, and you just separate it into bunches you could make as you see the display over here. Wow, they're you could... so pretty. Any tradition with the, the braiding? Yes, so some people do 12 braids to remember the 12 tribes of Israel. Some people do, if you see this, this is a round loaf. Mm -hmm. People have Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is coming up five weeks from now. They do round to symbolize the cycle of time, the oh. year, the cycle of life. I do a four braided, which I could show you how to do. Yes, please. <laughs> so you just pinch the tops together. And you just do an over, under, over, under motion. See, over, under, over. We've clearly over. done this before. <laughs> <laughs> over, under, over. My, my, my six-year-old son can do this. Is so that trust right? <laughs> me, once you get in the hang of it, it's really easy. It's oh, beautiful. Thank you. You end up with these beautiful loaves. Again, you cover them, let them rise a little mm -hmm. bit. Now, I know you're going to cover that with some egg yolks. Yes. Correct? In the meantime, though, yeah. I want to ask you a little bit about uh, Habat on the Shoreline. Tell us uh, the details. Sure. We're having this wonderful Shoreline Jewish Festival coming up mm -hmm. uh, August 11th on the Guilford Green. And we're going to have a uh, wonderful group of musicians, uh, Laser Lloyd Blues and Ari Lesser and some Klezmer. Fun for the whole family, wonderful food, wonderful activities, crafters, and we look forward to seeing everyone oh, there. You have a nice turnout. With it. How many years have you been doing this? This is the eighth year, and uh, we hope to have a great crowd. All right. Sounds fun to me. So we'll have you continue uh, the, the challah bread. Now, sure. Do you have to preheat the oven? Yeah, well, once this has risen to about double in size, you can uh, sprinkle it with some egg wash. I sprinkle on some sesame seeds. Ooh. You could do poppy seeds, cinnamon, chopped olives, garlic, whatever you want. And then you just bake it for about 25, 30 minutes in a 350 oven. And I have to show you, my friend lent me this. So what, some, some people cheat? Some people <laughs> cheat and just put the dough straight into a mold, and it comes out like this. But there's lots of great cookbooks if people want to read up on it. It's a wonderful history, and it's a great way to bring the family together for supper and for some tradition. Yeah, and you mentioned you had seven kids. Do they all take part in the process? We have seven children, thank God. <laughs> Two of them are away at school. And if they're home in time, they help me with the braiding, sure. And my older ones are actually able to do the entire thing themselves, so we put them to work. Yeah, you pass the tradition <laughs> yes, along we do. through the ages. It's actually uh, been something that Jewish women have done uh, taken upon themselves for many, many millennia, they, um, they hearken back to Sarah, our matriarch Sarah, Sarah and Abraham, where we believe that she had challah and her challah stayed fresh. 
Okay. So How interesting. Now we're going to try this at the end of the show, but tell our viewers what it kind of tastes like. Is it a sweetness to it? or? Well, every challah is different. As my wife said, there are different recipes mm -hmm. as well. And my wife's, of course, is the best. But <laughs> other than that, there are uh, many different varieties yeah. out there. Very good. All right. Well, thank you so much for the recipe. We'll have it up on WTNH.com. Thank you. And for more information, the Shoreline Jewish Festival is happening on Sunday, August 11th from noon to 5 on the Guilford Green. Go to ShorelineJewishFestival.com for more information. All right. Coming up next, over on Stage 8, Les Paul Trio, Nikki Parat takes Stage 8 for a solo performance when Style returns. We'll be right back.